Have you ever heard or ever told someone, follow your heart? Usually it's this idea of pursuing some uh, you know, dream or aspiration that's not guaranteed. Something a little out of the ordinary, maybe, like you wanting to be a singer or a writer, an actor, things like that. Well, I got to thinking about that, and you know, especially in light of some of the writing I've done and uh, things and how I, you know, what I needed to do to do that, and I think people are following their heart. Whether they're writing or not, they're writing or not because they're following their heart. I remember at times as I was working on screenwriting, I'd get up at four in the morning to get some writing in before I had to go to church and work that job. Uh, well, I was willing to do that. That's what I wanted was to get up that early. A lot of people who say they want to be a writer, well, that's not what they really want. They want to be a writer if it means they can do it, you know, they can leave their job. They can have plenty of time to focus and not get up at four in the morning. And not that I always did that or, you know, do everything, I, you know, everything's as clear now. But what I'm saying is I think we are starting to think we do follow our heart. And I get this from uh, what I think would be considered maybe a minor story in the, the Gospels. Uh, you know, it's certainly inspired, but I don't think anyone would put it up in the, all right, you know, one of the top 10 stories in the Gospels. And I'm talking about the beheading of John the Baptist. Uh, from this story, there is a major lesson that I've been seeing. And uh, the story here, if you're not familiar with it, and it's, it's a little misleading to refer to it as something of John the Baptist. It's Herod's beheading of John the Baptist. You need to include him because he's the main character here. The main character in the story is the one who makes the critical choices, and it's all Herod. You know, Herod has divorced his wife, and the wife of his brother divorced him, and Herod, and then Herodias is her name, Herod and Herodias, got married. Well, John the Baptist said, that's not right. You shouldn't have done it. We don't know exactly how Herod felt about that, but we know exactly how Herodias felt. In Mark chapter 6, verse 19, it says Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted him put to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. So we don't know what perplexed Herod exactly, but he liked to listen to John. And so you see that part, it sets things up, but if you're familiar with the rest of the story, you know that soon after, Herod throws himself a birthday banquet. You know, when you're in that position, and he was King Herod's son, uh, and still had about the power that Herod did at that point, uh, he throws a birthday banquet for the leading, you know, leaders of the, the area. And during that, Herodias' daughter dances for them. And Herod is so pleased, he makes an oath. He says, ask anything you want from me, and I'll give it to you up to half the kingdom. Well, she goes and talks to her mother, Herodias, and Herodias says, tell him you want the head of John the Baptist. Herod doesn't really want to do that, but he sees all, he's made this oath in front of all his friends, and he doesn't want to back down. And so he has John the Baptist beheaded. Well, in light of that, it made me think, uh, I often talk about uh, the growth spheres, our mind, our heart, and our will. And uh, if you've signed up to get the regular emails, then you got a free video that detailed all the growth geometry shapes I've put together to help understand these things. Uh, our mind is what we understand, our heart is what we want, and our will is what we do. And, uh, you know, you look at Herod, and you certainly see here that in his mind, he understood, he believed that John you know, was a special person, had a connection to God. When it says that he feared John, well, he didn't really fear John. He feared John because he saw some connection. He's a holy and righteous man. You know, what might happen with whatever view Herod had of God? And so he believed John should be protected, and that's what he wanted to do. You know, despite Herodias, his wife, wanted him to be put to death, Herod wanted him to be kept safe, and he kept him safe. That's what he did until it got to this point of making this oath and then not wanting to break it in front of those people. And in the past, I would have said that, you know what, our mind is what we know and understand, our heart then is what we, you know, we want, we commit to, and our will is what we do. And when our will acts contrary to our mind and our heart, well, that's just sometimes we do that. As I begin to look at this passage, I'm not so sure about that. You know, you look at Herod here. He wanted to keep John safe, yes, but what did he want even more? <laughs> he wanted to keep his 
position safe. He wanted to keep his pride intact. He made this oath and he's not willing to break it. So Herod, he didn't contradict what he knew and what he wanted. He actually did what he truly understood, what he believed about what was most important and what he truly wanted and was committed to. That was his pride over John's life. And so it was an aha moment there of, okay, we do always do what we truly want. Uh, another thing, and God has a way of helping us understand things uh, providentially. As I was going through this, I often talk about the fact my wife and I, and I don't, I probably say diet. I know, you know, diet's that temporary thing and, you know, it's more of a change of eating style. And it really is. That's sort of the point is we, we have a certain approach and it helps us in general lose weight. But uh, since we view it long term, we cheat all the time. And, you know, I had mentioned the fact we're on this diet or this different way of eating at times. And then someone heard me talk about eating ice cream. They're like, hey, how's that fit together? And it made me think and I realized that, that my heart in this matter, what I truly want is not to lose weight. I want to lose weight comfortably. Which means I'm not going to go without some of these, you know, extras like ice cream. You know, I could do that for a prolonged period of time and lose weight faster. I'd rather eat those now and then and lose weight slower. That's what I truly want. And so I'm doing what I want. And I begin to apply that spiritually. The, the choices we make, the things we do, the sins, the things I know I shouldn't do, but I do. I know I should do, but I don't. I miss the mark, that sin. I'm following my heart when I do those. I'm doing what I truly want. Now, there's a part of me that as a believer wants to serve God, wants to obey Him. I, yes. But when I don't, there must be. I don't think it's just okay, but at times I make a different decision. No, there must be something there I want even more in that specific area, that specific situation. And so the first benefit of this insight is to realize that instead of thinking, oh, I, you know, I'm just at times I really want to serve God, but I don't. Well, I really want to serve God, but there must be something I want more. And so examine, what is it? And we're going to talk more about that in the third video, but begin to think this way because it's really helped me in a couple times that things have come up and realize, okay, I want something more than doing what God says to do. What is it? Let's find out so that I can grow in this way. So I've got some action steps here that'll begin to apply things as always to help really ingrain this. Uh, next, we're going to look at, uh, you know, as I was thinking about this and I'm in the process of you know, a processing. I thought about something Paul said. I'm saying we do what we want to do. And I remembered in Romans 7, Paul says, the good that I want to do, I don't do. The evil that I don't want to do, I do. Well, how do those fit together? I don't want to disagree with Paul. So how do those fit? We'll look at that next.